This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. And uh, today I'm going to talk about exits. Um, I'm going to use a, a daily chart to show you how I would go about exiting a trade that uh, I consider to be uh, like a short to intermediate term type pattern. So um, we've got different uh, strategies that we can be using. We can be using a uh, interday method of trading, which is uh, getting in and out before the end of the day. Um, and you don't hold it overnight. And then you've got swing trading, which means you're going to hold it overnight, but it could be up to a couple days or even a couple weeks, depending on how you go about exiting the trade. Um, what I'm going to show is the uh, combination using a weekly and a daily. Um, it's kind of like one of my favorite uh, trading methods or timeframes to trade because what you can do is get um, it's it's a trade that can last anywhere from a couple days to uh, up to a month and uh, the reason that's the case is because we're allowing the stock's own volatility to determine how far the trade can go so let's go ahead and get into this example because I want to show you um, in detail what I'm looking at. So I've got uh, Newmont Mining. And uh, if you remember about a month ago, I went over a trade setup and explained why I would take a trade off this daily chart uh, with the ADX improving and the pinch play on the MACD uh, and really strong low ADX breakout developing on the weekly chart. So um, we had all of that kind of going in our favor. What I want to do now is go into how I would go about exiting this trade. So um, the entry I have here is, you know, it was, and I'm going to use round numbers just to keep it really simple. Um, 68 and a half is the um, entry point with a uh, 65 stop. And so if I'm looking at it from that standpoint, and I've got about a three and a half points of risk, what I like to do is measure that um, that level. That's three and a half points. That's my R. That's my risk level. Now, I do know that I have a prior high over here, okay? And it shows up on the weekly chart. And I, I think that's relevant. If you're not getting um, at least hitting a target. So look at it this way. If, if I've got a target... Um, if, if I know that I've risked three and a half points, okay, and um, I need to have at least three and a half points to get to this prior high, okay? So, I, and the reason is, is I know I'm going to take a profit once I've reached that level. Once I've gotten three and a half points in my favor, I'm going to take some part of the position off at that prior high, uh, preferably. And if it, if, it, if it has to go beyond that, then I might question whether I want to take the trade. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, but the reality is, is that if I can take a quarter piece off and in, on a daily chart, I, uh, because there's more volatility, I don't give it as much room. Um, it maybe is counterintuitive, but what I'm trying to do with a daily trade is, is treat it more like as long as this is working in my favor, I want to stick with it. If, if it doesn't, then I'm going to be stopped out. So I look at my entry. I get uh, I know I have three and a half point stop. Once I get three and a half points in my favor, about 72, I'm going to take a quarter of my position off. So if I bought 1,000 shares, I would take 250 shares and sell it uh, at that first target, which is three and a half points away from my entry. Um, now, that that basically what that does for me is um, it gives me a small profit. And then what I do with the stop is I actually move it to a break even. So what I've done now is I've got a risk-free trade on because I've taken a partial profit and now what's left is pretty minimal. I mean, I've got, I'm basically at a break even on the balance. So I have 750 shares left and uh, they're at a break even. So if the stock were to turn on a dime and come stop me out, then I end up making a really small profit. Okay. Now, um, what we want to do from here is if we go to another uh, level of risk, another three and a half points, you want to take another quarter off. Okay, so I've, I've marked that here on the chart around 75 and a half. Now, I'm taking another 250 shares and pocketing the profit. 
And, and now what I'm going to do is raise the stop to this first target. Okay, so now the wor so I've got 500 shares list. The worst I'm going to do on that is take a um, a profit at the first target level. Okay, the reason why I want to do this is because I want to continue to um, trail the stop in a way that gives it enough room to breathe. But if it starts to give back too much, I don't want to be there. Now, if you notice what happened is it, it actually took another leg to the upside and it reached another level of risk, meaning another three and a half points moves in my favor. Now we're at another uh, three and a half points. We're up around 79. I take another quarter of a position off. And what I'm going to do with the stop um, is raise that up. I'm going to move that up to the second target, okay? So now what I've got is I've taken three targets. The average is two times what I've risked. So I've taken um, three targets, and the average is um, 2R, okay? Because I'm, I'm looking at the entry minus the stop. That's the R level, okay? So now I've taken two levels, and... Um, I am at a, a new high over here. Remember, I broke out. So what I want to do with the last piece, I, I, I have a last quarter, is not just take a target. I'm going to go ahead and keep trailing a stop. So I take this stop and I move it to 2R. Now, if it goes to 4R, then I'm going to raise the stop to 3R. If it goes to 5, I'm going to go to 4. I'm going to keep doing that until I get stopped out of the trade. But if you notice what happened here, once we hit 3R, we actually had a reversal and we came down and we were stopped out. So the last quarter was taken out at 2R. So, you know, I I, I would I averaged on that trade uh, 2R. I took um, one quarter at 1R, another quarter at 3R, and then the other two quarters at 2R. So I, it's a pretty good trade. If I can make two times what I risk on a trade, um, I've, I consider that to be a really strong um, trading play, okay? Now, I did mark the entry. There's another, so I, what I want you to keep in mind if you're swing trading is if we make a new high here and it comes down, it was a little volatile, but if it comes down and holds an 18, which is rising above a 40, and we have confirmation MACD and a new high in uh ADX, very strong ADX condition, we can take the next entry. So I took this trade, I made some money, and now I would enter again. And I would go through the exact same process to the upside um, again here. So I want you to keep this in mind. Now, you don't have to follow the way I went about this. You don't have to necessarily take a profit at every target, and you don't have to raise the stop at every target. I like doing this off the daily. Now, if I'm going to do it off the weekly, I usually give it more room. I don't necessarily take a target at each one of these. I might take it at one um, and then at three. Um, and I might not raise the stop every time. I might only raise the stop every other target. So I give it a little bit more room to breathe. And I like to do that when I have a monthly and weekly in my favor and I'm looking for a big move. So that becomes a longer term trade. And when I'm looking at it from a longer term standpoint, I want to give it more room. But this I'm trying to look at as it's a weekly daily. And my average holding period, again, could be anywhere from a couple days if it just goes up and turns on a dime. That's happened to me a number of times. Or it keeps trending to the upside without a huge amount of volatility. And you can turn one where you risk three and a half dollars in the last quarter, you make 20 or 25 dollars. Again, that's happened to me as well. So you can turn that into a really monster win um, and just keep it simple and, uh, and make sure you're risking a consistent amount each time. So if I take uh, three and a half points of risk, figure out how many shares you can buy and, and make that one percent risk in the account. Okay, I've gone through this in other videos, so I hope this makes sense already. Um, keep the risk at 1% of equity. And once you know that, then you can be really consistent. And the whole goal with the my exit strategy is to improve the consistency of your equity line. You want your equity line to have a nice smooth look to it. 
with um, higher highs and higher lows. Yes, you're going to have drawdowns, but you don't want to have this kind of movement. If you're doing that kind of movement and you want to keep track of your equity line, if your equity line is making big jagged movements, then your your exit strategy might need some work, number one. Number two, you got to figure out how much you're risking per trade. And three, if you're getting big drawdowns like this and then back down, then you have to make sure you're being really strict about your entry strategies. Um, if you're following the MACD, MACD and ADX patterns that are showing really good strength, you shouldn't have massive drawdown movements if you're risking the same amount every time. If you risk 1% per trade, okay, then you shouldn't have this kind of a look if you're taking exits this way, okay? So um, a lot to kind of chew on here, but just keep this in mind. This is mainly, mainly focused on uh, taking targets and understanding how to scale and trail so that you have the potential for a big winner uh, but you're also blocking in gains and you're turning this first, once you turn this into a win, uh, this really helps your uh, equity line. You're going to have a, a more steady equity line moving higher if you take profits this way. Okay, so hope this makes sense. Uh, go ahead and post any questions or comments. Thanks. Thanks.